Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India John Dryden is a gigantic figure of the restoration age. We will examine the historical literary context, see something about Dryden himself, then move on to the text that we have chosen for this course, McFleckno and the background figures like Richard Fleckno, Thomas Shadwell who are actually the targets of this poem McFleckno and see the structure of course, see the features of mock heroic poem, then we will pay attention to certain selected passages from the first part of this poem, analyze them and then uh, conclude this session. The historical background for John Dryden, the restoration period is actually a long period beyond that, but we will begin with abdication of Richard Cromwell in 1659 and return of Charles II as the King of England in 1660. We will also see this test act passed in 1673 against dissenters, Catholics and Jews. We can notice this popish plot to topple the government in 1678. Then we can notice this ascension of King James II for a brief period in 1675 and uh, 1688. Then the suspension of the test act and the birth of the king's son which led to lot of apprehensions about this Catholic dynasty in England and the subsequent glorious revolution or bloodless revolution and the king's own abdication and the arrival of William the third and Mary the second to rule England. Now, because of this constant problems between the king and the parliament, we have this bill of rights to limit the powers of the king and to increase the powers of the parliament. We also have the toleration act to accommodate the dissenters particularly from the protestant group. This was not extended to Catholics or Jews. We notice the constant political conflicts and religious conflicts on the one side we have conflicts between the king and the parliament, on the other hand we have religious conflicts between people of different kinds particularly protestants and catholics. This is the age that shaped John Dryden. Dryden was very powerful for 40 years, he led a productive life, he wrote poems, plays, criticism and translations, he was a successful poet, translator. What he did was to change his political affiliations right from Cromwell period. We have to remember that Dryden, Milton and Andrew Marvell, these were the three poets who went along with the last rites of Oliver Cromwell and with this pre-restoration period, restoration period and the glorious revolution period we find Dryden able to maintain good contact with this king or anyone in power. That is where we have this focus on Dryden's change of uh, political affiliations. He was a supporter of Cromwell, King Charles II and James II as well. As a result, he was able to become poet laureate and maintain it for some time from 1668 to 1689. When there was a change of government, again he lost his power, his post of poet laureate and historiographer royal to Thomas Shadwell, his opponent who is attacked in McFleckno. He says in this poem McFleckno, all human things are subject to decay and that is true of Dryden himself. Later in 20th century, we have Robert Frost saying the same thing in a fewer words, nothing gold can stay, nothing royal can stay, nothing great can stay. Mac Flecknoy is the personal satire that we are going to look into in this course. It was published in 1682 without Dryden's own authorization. Later on it was published in 1684 with the supervision of Dryden. This is a mock heroic poem, it is a satirical poem on Thomas Shadwell 
as the inheritor of dullness and nonsense from Richard Flecknoe, another contemporary poet of Dryden. This Flecknoe died in 1678. When it was published first, it had the subtitle or a satire on the true blue Protestant poet T. S. that is Thomas Shadwell. Critics now have unearthed certain facts about the date of composition of this poem and so they fix it as 1676 to 1677. It was widely circulated before it was published in its unauthorized form. Later on the corrected version, the first publication had some mistakes, these were corrected and published in 1684. MacFlecknoe title is actually a reference to Richard MacFlecknoe. MacFlecknoe Flecknoe means the son of Flecknoe. Who is that Flecknoe? That is Richard Flecknoe. Richard Flecknoe was an English poet, a dramatist, a traveler. He was a Roman Catholic priest. He was claiming to be the arbiter of taste and a son of Ben Jonson. Many poets, you know, we have one tribes of Ben in the early 17th century. And so here is one Richard Flecknoe. Thomas Sherwell also owed allegiance to Ben Jonson. Flecknoe had written Miscellanea and also a play called Love's Kingdom. As a playwright, he was defending the stage. When he went to Italy, he met Andrew Marvel in Italy. However, Marvel had satirized this uh, Flecknoe in his poem called Flecknoe and English Priest at Rome. It was written in 1645 but published only in 1681. Some critics believe that Marvel's poem might have inspired Dryden to satirize. Thomas Shadwell in MacFlecknoe. This is only a conjecture. Dryden's poem became later on a model for Pope's poem called The Dunciad. Who is this Shadwell? We have already seen him to be an opponent of Dryden. He was a very successful dramatist. As we said, yeah, he was a follower of Ben Jonson's comedy of humors. Based on this comedy of humors, he had written some 14 comedies. One of the most successful comedies of Shadwell was The Virtuoso written in 1676. It was a satire on the royal society. He also adapted Shakespeare's play The Tempest. He could not perform his own plays freely without restriction during King Charles II and also King James II because of his quarrel with Dryden. Dryden somehow prevented him from staging uh, Shadwell's plays very freely. We have a comparison between the two now. These two are religiously and politically different dramatists. Dryden had royalist Tory leanings, Shadwell on the other hand had Whig and Protestant leanings. While Dryden loved Shakespeare, Shadwell loved and admired Johnson. Dryden appreciated the comedy of wit, whereas Shadwell believed that the comedy of humours was the best. While Dryden found God's plenty in drama and literature, Shadwell found only one way of looking at things like puritanic and moralistic idea of life. Dryden was a powerful personality, but he was not so popular in his own time as Shadwell. He was a popular dramatist, but today Shadwell is forgotten. We remember Dryden today for his various contributions. But Shadwell we remember primarily because Dryden had satirized him in his poem MacFlecknoe. A mock heroic poem has certain features. It follows great epic models like Homer's Iliad and Virgil's Aeneid. It has a great theme of this succession and inheritance. It has characters from the royalty like king and prince. It uses an elevated language modeling on Latin and Greek. It also uses epic simile and irony. The purpose of uh, a mock heroic is to satirize human follies and expose people of their weaknesses. The effect it has on the audience is different. While the poem has a comic effect on the readers, it has a loss of face for the subject that is satirized in this poem. It is called mock heroic because it uses heroic conventions, but for the purpose of mocking at people. The poem MacFlecknoe has 217 lines 
and it can be broadly divided into four groups part 1 from 1 to 63 where Flecknoe Richard Flecknoe chooses his heir apparent Shadwell as his successor and in the second part from 64 to 93 the setting is described setting of London and in the third one from 95 to 138 we have the announcement for this coronation of Shadwell as a king of nonsense and in the last one from 139 to 217 uh, we find Flecknoe is offering his blessings uh, to Shadwell and crowns him as a new king of nonsense to perpetuate stupidity in uh, writings. We have some selected passages we will read them and for each slide we have some titles like for this one for example Flecknoe's resolution. These titles uh, will be of great help to understand the different passages and also the whole effect of this uh, the passages we have chosen. The first one is Flecknoe's resolution. It starts like this, all human things are subject to decay and when fate summons monarchs must obey this Flecknoe found who like Augustus Young was called to the empire and had governed long in prose and verse was warned without dispute through all the realms of nonsense absolute. This aged prince now flourishing in peace and blessed with the issue of a large increase. This aged prince now flourishing in peace and blessed with the issue of a large increase worn out with business did at length debate to settle the succession of the state and pondering which of all his sons was fit to reign and wage immortal war with wit cried it is a resolve for nature pleads that he should only rule who most resembles me. The title we have given for this uh, passage is Flecknoe's choice. Now Flecknoe has chosen so he names Shadwell alone my perfect image bears mature in dullness from his tender years Shadwell alone of all my sons is he who stands confirmed in full stupidity the rest to some faint meaning make pretense, but Shadwell never deviates into sense. Some beams of wit on other souls may fall, strike through and make a lucid interval, but Shadwell's genuine night admits no ray, his rising fogs prevail upon the day. Besides his goodly fabric fills the eye and seems designed for thoughtless majesty, thoughtless as monarch oaks that shade the plain and spread in solemn state supinely reign. Flecknoe has chosen Shadwell because of his complete stupidity. Uh, he will not deviate that is move away from uh, nonsense to sense at all. So, even no light will come into his uh, dark stupidity that is why Flecknoe has chosen Shadwell as his inheritor. Who is this? Shadwell further emphasis on the foolishness of this poet we have. He is a prophet of tautology. Hey would and surely were but types of thee, thou last great prophet of tautology, even I a dance of more renowned than they was sent before but to prepare thy way and coarsely clad in Noric drugget came to teach the nations in thy greater name, my wobbling lute the lute I while am strung when to King John of Portugal I sung was but the prelude to the glorious day when thou on silver Thames didst cut thy way with well timed oars before the royal barge swelled with the pride of thy celestial charge and big with him commander of an host the like was never in Epsom blankets tossed. Flecknoe now considers himself to be a kind of St. John who has come before Jesus Christ to prepare the way for the kingdom of Shadwell. So, he is considered to be a prophet of tautology that is circumlocution not saying anything clearly. This new king of nonsense is received with cheers by people on the way. So, we have lot of cheers for Shadwell from the public. Methinks I see the new Aryan sail, the lute still trembling underneath thy nail, at thy well sharpened thumb from shore to shore, the treble squeaks for fear, the buzzes roar, echoes from pissing alley, shared call, 
and Chadwell they resound from Aston Hall about the boat the little fish is strong as said the morning toes the floats along sometimes as prince of the harmonious band thou wieldest thy papers in thy threshing hand here we have a journey of uh, Shadwell to the coronation location he is traveling he is sailing on a boat on river Thames and there is a mythological reference to Arian he was a poet who was drowned in water and some dolphin came and saved him but here there is no such possibility. So, here we have uh, echoes from Pissing Alley that is the place where people urinate and so you can see how uh, Dryden is undermining the capacity of Shadwell making him a dirt. Now, this is a kind of confirmation of this dullness on uh, Shadwell we have St. Andrew's feet never kept more equal time not even the feet of thy own psyche's rhyme though they in number as in sense excel so just so like tautology they fell that pale with the envy singleton for sore the lute and sword which he in triumph bore and vowed he would never act to Willaris more he has stopped the good old sire and wept for joy in silent raptures of the hopeful boy all arguments but most his place persuade that for anointed dullness he was made. Thomas Shadwells is such a suitable boy no argument can dissuade him from becoming something else. He is anointed he is crowned for dullness. Psyche refers to a play Cupid and Psyche by Shadwell himself. The location the city where Shadwell is being coronated. So, we have a mythical reference to Augusta the place Augustan uh, period and all that. So, the parallel between heroic and mock heroic we have uh, in Dryden. Close to the walls which fair Augusta bind the fair Augusta much to fears inclined an ancient fabric raised to inform the site there stood of your barbican it height. You have watched ever once, but now so fate ordains of all the pile and empty name remains from its old ruins, brothel houses rise, scenes of lewd loves and of polluted joys, where their vast courts their mother's trumpets keep and undisturbed by watch in silent sleep. Near these, a nun nursery erects its head, where queens are formed and future heroes bred, where unfledged actors learn to laugh and cry, where infant punks their tender voices try. This has reference to a, a brothel house, a nursery where uh, actors are trained to act in place, all uh, bad things about uh, the location and uh, this reputation is brought to Shadwell by bringing Shadwell uh, to this particular place by Dryden. He has uh, Shadwell has come here and he has to occupy his throne. So, we have Shadwell's throne pure clinches the suburban muse of words and pantan waging harmless war with words here Flecno as a place to fame well known ambitiously designed his Shadwell's throne for ancient Decker prophesied long since that in this pile should reign a mighty prince born for a scourge of wit and fly of sense to whom true dullness should some psyche zoo but worlds of misers from his pen should flow humorous and hypocrites it should produce while Raymond families and tribes of Bruce. These are some of the characters from uh, Chadwell's play and we have this reference to Psyche and here all we have is only dullness nothing else dull wittedness that is what we have here and uh, whatever Dryden can do to bring down the fame of Shadwell he has done it uh, all dirt all heap of uh, broken things here he is. Uh, giving the throne to Shadwell through Flecno. In the selected passages we have seen we notice certain thematic contrasts. On the one hand we have growth and decay, then we have obedience and disobedience, young and old, son and father that is uh, uh, Flecno and uh, Shadwell, father blessing the son uh, in, in fact referring to the curse that uh, uh, is possible. We also have <coughs> contrast between peace and war intelligence and stupidity, sense and nonsense, what is true or what is not true, the king and the subject, humility and pride, past and present, ancient and modern, love and hate, aphorism and tautology, fate and free will, palace on the one hand, brothel house on another, courthouse on the one hand and pissing alley on the other hand, 
Dryden has brought in all these contrasts to tell us about the choice that he makes for Shadwell and Flecknoe to occupy nonsense, the kingdom of nonsense, the, the location of nonsense, nonsense which promotes stupidity. Flecknoe wants to ensure this continuation of nonsense through Shadwell according to Dryden and he gives some examples of this. Whatever creative activities that are possible for Flecknoe, Shadwell indulging in aphorism or tautology or word play or puns nothing more, nothing creative, nothing great they can write that is what Dryden says, but critics have found that Flecknoe was not such a bad writer as Dryden thought or even Shadwell was not such a shabby writer as Dryden has projected. We find a number of poetic devices here, we begin with actually this epigram uh, which is attributed to something like uh, uh, a short pithy saying that uh, Flecknoe and uh, Shadwell would write. All human things are subject to decay and when fate summons monarchs must to obey this growth and decay and this obedience and disobedience, fate and free will all these ideas are brought in within the first two lines even king and subject like monarch they are brought in here. The whole poem has this metaphorical structure of kingdom of nonsense, king of nonsense, prince of nonsense and in this kingdom only darkness will rule, only night will be there, no ray will come in, all fog will be there, so nothing clear will be there. There is also the simile of thoughtless as monarch oaks, in a forest where we have high oaks they, they are considered to be thoughtless, they do not have anything else, but Dryden uses this kind of simile to attack Flecknoe and also Shadwell. We have these references, these are uh, religious or these are mythical, they are they have high uh, nobility or high level of importance and respect, but he by contrasting with this. Uh, religious and mythical uh, Roman uh, allusions, what Dryden does is to throw Flecknoe and Shadwell down into the depth of dung or dungeon. So, uh, in the first allusion we have St. John preparing the way for Jesus like uh, Flecknoe preparing the way for uh, Shadwell and in the case of the second allusion Arian a mythical poet who was saved by dolphins, but in this case nothing Shadwell cannot be saved by anything and also the city where the place where uh, Shadwell is crowned is called Augusta referring to Augustus or Augustan Rome. The rhyme, rhythm and meter these are very interesting for us to see in Dryden, uh, he, Dryden uses heroic couplet which is uh, a rhymed iambic pentameter, we have heroic couplet and that is the example we have here, Haywood and Shirley these were dramatists of the period, Haywood and Shirley were but types of the thou last great prophet of tautology, this uh, Shadwell is considered to be a prophet of tautology and other contemporaries like Haywood and Shirley they were uh, similar poets with bad temperaments or bad poetry. Uh, we have given this uh, break to uh, analyze the uh, syllables and foot. So, it is easy for us to see. Uh, we also have this cesura, enjambment and end stop in a triplet, Dryden for the sake of variety uses triplets in this poem, here we have one uh, in line number 57 to 59 that pale with the envy singleton for sore the lute and sword which he in triumph bore and vowed he never would act villarious more for sore bore more these three words rhyme with each other to draw attention to the new Villarius a character in one of the plays of Devenant. <coughs> Another a contemporary of uh, Dryden uh, who was a mentor for uh, Dryden actually. The meter is iambic pentameter, I am we have seen some time ago, I am refers to unstressed and stressed syllables, penta means phi. So, we have this uh, scansion here, we have lot of variations 2 and phi where we have this instead of I am we have spondy and peric. All human things are subject to decay and when fate summons monarchs must obey, this Flecno found who like Augustus young was called to empire and had governed long in prose and verse was owned without dispute through all the realms of nonsense absolute. We can see the uh, breaks to understand the metrical feat. 
on the whole we see that Dryden uh, is reflecting on the inevitable fate of changes in human life and suggests the theme of succession. Something has to follow one after another for good and also bad. Dryden because of his personal vendetta against uh, Flecknoe and also Shadwell, he is thinking in terms of dullness, nonsense uh, to attack Flecknoe and Shadwell. Dryden adapts the story of a king and son, picturizes the coronation ceremony of transfer of power in the kingdom of nonsense. He prepares this whole sequence of story traveling from one place to another, particularly through this river Thames. He creates and sabotages the solemn occasion of coronation, celestial blessings to satirize Thomas Shadwell, a professional rival. Dryden invokes the father Flecno, who also had indulged in an attack on Thomas Killigrey, Sir William Devenant, George Etheridge, and of course Dryden. These belong to one group. Thomas Killigrey was a manager of King's Company. Uh, for this company, Dryden was writing his plays. Because these were attacked by Flecknoe and Shadwell, Dryden uh, takes vengeance on Flecknoe and Shadwell. Dryden organizes the ceremony, coronation ceremony in a place of disrepute near brothel houses, pissing alley and all that and thus attempts to push Shadwell out of the public favor by associating Shadwell with dirty things in life. To summarize what we have seen in Dryden's Mac Flecknoe, we have noticed the historical literary context in which Dryden was writing. Uh, he wrote this Mac Flecknoe, keeping Richard Flecknoe in mind, so that he could uh, give the place of uh, inheritance to Thomas Shadwell as the son of Mac Flecknoe. Mac Flecknoe is a, a heroic poem which attacks Richard Flecknoe, uh, who is considered to be the father of Thomas Shadwell in this poem. We saw the four divisions in Mac Flecknoe and also we saw how this is a mock heroic poem by referring to models on epics in terms of themes, characters and language. We saw some selected passages and analyzed the poetic devices and saw the overall impression. The purpose of Dryden was to attack Thomas Shadwell. He used Flecknoe also as his father because belong to the opposite camp. If you like to see some references, you can explore these and learn more about Dryden's artistry in heroic couplet and personal satire. Thank you.